so this um, is a page I'm just going to have a, a, a quick line about um, about angles. We call them camera angles in comics. Basically, the idea is that you try and change the camera angle as much as possible on a page to keep it interesting, to keep it interesting to the reader. So they're not simply seeing uh, a static shot of somebody's head and maybe their shoulders for six panels. So this is an example of how I've got, um, approached that. In the top panel, we have somebody being taken away by aliens. It's a very serious comic. Um, and basically, you've got a, a group of um, bishops who have just run into the room, and they're trying to say, "No, you must, uh, you must stay uh, here." And now we've got somebody. You know, the camera is now coming down on top of people's heads, and you can see somebody reaching up, trying to grab this person as they're being taken away. Um, then, in the in the third panel, you are now changing it to have what we call a worm's eye view, or a worm looking up, and how that view would be. So now this guy is being lifted away, and we can see from sort of down around their waistlines, pointing back up to the to the principal character. Again, you can change it to take out a wider view, so now you've got the, a bit of the background of the room and all the people involved. And then, on a jet, a, an older rule was, if you were going to include a close-up of somebody's face, you should only ever have it on one, one panel per page at any one time. So, it's a rule that you can, it's a good guide. Um, occasionally it can be broken dependent on the content of the script. But here we've got our close-up on our principal character's face at the bottom. And then, Again, another sort of a, a, a separate angle. Again, showing these uh, these bishops who are trying to chase after him. So it's an I it's an I uh, an idea of how to approach these things, and you just keep it as interesting as possible. So as well as your story grabbing readers' attention, um, they're not going to sort of start drifting away because your uh, comic panels are all effectively looking the same. So it's a it's a, another way of making the comics more interesting and keeping it fun for you as you're making putting your comic together. If you'd like to know about my working day, let's go over to the drawing board. This is my basic board. I use this as a notice board more than anything else. Here you can see there's more than one project on the go. I normally have somewhere between five and ten. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, and hidden underneath there is another one. So that makes uh, six, in, six or possibly seven in total. Um, and that's normally about my standard working load. So we'll, uh, I'll print out the script which will look approximately like this. Uh, I'll then um, basically run through it, taking out all the props. I call them props, so I'll need a digital camera, I'll need a plate, I'll need a floor and a messy desk and some photos and somebody's eye. And in that way, I can pick out all the important bits that are going to have to happen within those panels in order for the story to be clearly understood. From that script, I'll then produce a series of what we call thumbnails. And this is uh, examples of different things that I'm working on at the moment. And what you can basically see is, um, effectively, that's a comic page. And in, within that page, I'll divide it up into different panels. That way I can figure out lighting. I can figure out who's going to be speaking first within each panel, because that always has to be the first person on the left. I can then figure out the flow, the way the reader's eye will be taken around the page and then I can figure out which panels are going to need to be larger based on the amount of dialogue that's going in the panels and the amount of detail that's going to be needed in the panels. From that, I can then go to finished artwork. Pencils will look at something along these lines, so I'll have my panels fully drawn out and then I'll be able to add in whatever details I need and from that point I can then move on to an ink stage which will look something approximating this I can add in ink washes, I can add in uh, black watercolours, and then I can add in white acrylic over the black Indian ink to produce stars or any other special effects that I need to make. 